Are you serious, guys? Are you serious? Get a cup of coffee. Everybody get a cup of coffee. This is incredible. But the Baltimore Key Bridge just came tumbling down. And uh, wow. I mean, are you serious? This is a very serious situation. You can see the bridge behind me there. You can see the ship right over my shoulder. This thing was massive. It was two and a half football fields as it crashes into the Baltimore Francis Key Scott Bridge into the Key Bridge or Francis Scott Key Bridge, excuse me, the Key Bridge in Baltimore with the, one of the largest shipping yards for American freight coming and going. Is this the Black Swan event that Ron Paul and General Flynn have been talking about? Are you serious? And I'm going to be on television tonight being interviewed on Newsmax about these issues, the apocalypse, and the whole reason that we wrote the book Revelation 9-11 because I think something biblical is going on with the signs of the second coming of Christ. And did somebody hack this ship? Did somebody right here, right here, did somebody hack this ship to cause this problem? Let me tell you all about it. First of all, www.mypillow.com forward slash Paul. Use the promo code Paul. That's www.mypillow.com forward slash Paul. Use the promo code Paul. Mike Lindell, thank you so much. He has done so much for to help share the gospel, and his pillows are insanely, man, they are amazing. Are you serious? Wait that flag, Mike. He's a true American, loves the Lord. And uh, let's just move that out of his way because it was right in front of his face. We don't want that. There he is. Okay, there he is. Uh, let me just say this quickly. He, he has done a lot for the gospel. I want you to do something. He has, and he's done a lot for the gospel, and he's doing a lot for publiclyprophecy.com. Uh, if you go to uh, www.mypillow.com forward slash Paul, use the promo code Paul today. You can get the incredible sales like never before. He specially has done it for us today. Bed sheets, 50% off, okay? 50% off. You can get queen size uh, bed sheets right now for $39.98. You can get my pillow. This is unbelievable. Queen size, okay? <laughs> my pillows, queen size, $25. Are you serious? King size. $25 if you use the promo code Paul. You got to go, to, but you got to go to www.mypillow.com forward slash Paul. Okay. Forward slash Paul. Don't forget that. And then use the promo code Paul. He is, and, and, a, and, a, and a, a large percentage of this goes to the ministry to help us. So, I mean, he's really been a friend to us and he's given us great, I mean, the discounts are off the chain. Dog beds, uh, sheets. Six-piece towel sets for only $25, and they're quality towels. I mean, you've seen him pour the water on it and say, get that out of here. Guys, seriously, uh, unbelievable. Dish towel sets, beach towel sets. It's summertime. Uh, couch recliner pillows off the chain. Everything cut down drastically. What's he doing? Down to $25 if you use the promo code Paul. You got to go there and look at it. Okay, you just got to go look at this. I can't believe what he's down comforters. Okay, my pillow mattresses, slippers, pillows, pillows, even my pillow 2.0. He's cut the price by 50%. Unbelievable. Go there now. Coffee, Mike. What are you doing, Mike? You can't have you can't have my coffee. He does. He has my coffee. Uh, not mine, but his, but he calls it mine. What are you doing, Mike? He's what he's doing. He's trying to give us everyone a great deal. So check it out at mypillow.com. All right. Now, let's talk about this situation with the bridge because seriously, guys, Oh, my Lord, this is tragic. There are seven people. Oh, and by the way, we just went, uh, just so you know, we went number one again this morning, this time in a third different category. Um, uh, Revelation 9-11 has gone number one again uh, this time in, uh, let's see, it went number one yesterday in spiritual warfare. It went number one today um, in... Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Number one today in um, New Testament commentaries. It had already went number one several times in the uh, category of church and state. So it's this book now five times 
Uh, today makes the sixth time it's gone number one in categories church and state. Yesterday it went in number one in spiritual warfare, and today it went number one New Testament commentaries, all hot new releases uh, today, hot new release. So check it out, guys. Um, it's doing extremely well, and I'll be on. Yesterday, my, co- my co-author, Troy Anderson, was on um, – he was on One America. He was on One America Network yesterday, being interviewed, and they even showed a clip of the interview I did with um, Mark Biltz that was on the Alex Jones show. So they showed that clip, plus what General Mike Flynn had to say about a Black Swan event. Also, they they talked to about what Rand Paul said, and then they talked to Troy Anderson, my co-author. Today, I'm on Newsmax, and tomorrow, Troy Anderson and myself both are on CBN, Christian Broadcasting News. We'll tell you about the time on that, I think around 11 o'clock or something like that, between 11 and 12. Tonight, I'm on Newsmax between 4 and 5 p.m. Eastern. Between 4 and 5 p.m. Eastern, I'm on Newsmax talking about the solar eclipse, the coming apocalypse, this collapse of the bridge. Is this the uh, is this the moment? Is this the black swan moment? Is this what we're talking about during this time? Is this terrorism? Who knows what this is really? But is it a prophetic sign? Has the bridge been broken uh, between the United States and Asia? Has the bridge been broken between America and God? I mean, it's a question you have to start asking. Your question, and we got to start praying. Our, our Nineveh moment is upon us. Our Nineveh moment is upon us, folks. We've got to decide what we're going to do. Are we as a nation going to prepent? Yes, it could be biblical. The Bible talks about when a city is cursed, the walls will fall down. The Bible says we need to be repairers of the breach or the bridge. As, as, as men and women of God, in Isaiah 56, God says, I need those who will be the repair, repairers of the breach. How do you become that? You have to fast and pray so that you can repair the bridge. There's something significant going on. Now, also, I want you to pray for the seven souls that are under the water right now. Pray for the families that are in this situation. Pray for the everybody involved but also what caused this we have to look at this we know where we stand with god and right now it's not good but what caused this this is key i think to understanding what's been going on here uh in our midst okay it's it's incredible but did this bridge lose navigation the answer is yes the power was lost just before it hit the bridge Uh, do we know what caused it? Do we know what caused it? And so uh, the the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore collapsed earlier today, this morning about 1.40, after a large container ship, the Dolly, struck a primary support column that holds up the whole bridge. Uh, Now, two individuals, thank God, were rescued. One is in critical serious condition the authorities estimate that seven people are still underwater in vehicles including a tractor trailer Uh, though the number could even be higher than that this incident represents the most severe u.s bridge collision since the tampa bay sky bridge disaster of 1980 i remember that's a year i graduated from high school the event occurred in the early morning hours as the ship was leaving the port under the pilotage agencies are reporting that the container ship dolly which collided with the baltimore bridge lost propulsion while exiting the port the crew on board alerted the maryland officials that they had lost control of the vehicle as reported by abc news uh they lost the navigation system soon as they got out into the water they all of a sudden lost control of the, the, the ability to steer the ship. They had no control of the propulsion. They had no control of the navigation. They were literally out of control, but the ship was running. The engine was rolling, but they had no control. Now you might say that's insane. That's impossible. No, because today these ships, AI, and of course the, the, using technology, uh, using 
uh, you know, GPS navigation systems. We've now, we no longer depend on men looking and, and manual uh, operation. We depend on computer systems. I truly believe that there, this was hacked. <clears throat> I'm going to say it now. I honestly, honest to God, believe this was hacked. This ship was owned uh, is a Singapore. It's an Asian ship. This cargo was headed to Asia. This bridge is one of the most important bridges linking an entire massive amount of, of, of warehouses that ship uh, containers, uh, thousands and thousands of containers a day go out of Baltimore to, you know, to, the, to, the, uh, to the world and come back. With this bridge down and in where it's located, it is completely shut down. It's the worst thing could ever happen. For several reasons. It's, a, it's, it's the worst thing that can ever happen. First of all, there's 10,000 containers on that ship. That ship is two and a half football fields long. It's, it's, but did you know Apophis is three and a half football fields long? So when next time you look at the picture of that ship, the, the enormous size of it, the, gravi- the, 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 the gravity of the situation, look how huge that thing is. Apophis is a third time bigger, another third bigger. Imagine Apophis coming in and crashing into the ocean at that size at 40,000 miles an hour. That's why I keep talking about Apophis, the god of chaos, coming on Friday the 13th, April the 13th, 2029. But that's another story. We'll get there when we get there, if we get there. Jesus is coming soon. Now listen, this ship lost total navigation ability. The vessel notified the uh, uh, the uh, The vessel notified the Maryland Department of Transportation that they had lost complete control of the ship and a collision with the bridge was very possible. The ship, the the engine was running. The throttle was on. They couldn't shut it down. They couldn't stop. It was already on and it was out of control. They they were not, look at this. They were not controlling the ship. So the worst thing imaginable would be the ship would keep going for a half hour Crash into the bridge, but not just anywhere in the bridge. Crash into the main structure that holds the bridge. That's like, you know, firing. The odds of that are like firing a shot into the sky and it hitting an airplane. Okay? I mean, think this through, guys. So it's out of control. You have no control. The throttle's on. It's turning. It's going where it wants. And even in the video, you'll see it. It literally turns and heads for the pylon. The the captain is screaming, it's not us. We didn't do it. They even try to shut the power down. The The power comes back on. They can't control the ship. And I'm telling you this thing was hacked. I, I don't know, though. I'm not the expert. I'm, 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 I'm assuming. Obviously, I'm assuming either that or this is the absolute worst probability could ever happen in history to literally bring a ship out of the harbor, turn it, head it down the river, navigating it somehow, and heading it straight for the pylon that takes the bridge down. Are you serious? Now, listen to this. Now, all that cargo that cannot ship because the bridge is in the way and all the cargo that needs to come in can't get in because the bridge is in the way and all the cars that link the city of Baltimore the main thorough the outer uh, perimeter can't go on the bridge because the bridge is gone so that forces all that traffic downtown into Baltimore into tunnels that were already jammed with traffic without with the bridge working So the economy of Baltimore, and not just Baltimore, but the economy on the East Coast, and not just the East Coast, but uh, as these containers are shipped across America on trucks, and as containers need to be shipped to Asia and and Europe and different places across the world, everything comes to a a, 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 a crashing halt. Now, this is just a day after the blood moon. And just a few days before the the solar eclipse. And my question is, will there be more events between now and, yes, this, uh, this, no, 
No, the reason these ships haven't been going through the Suez Canal, great question, is because there's been terrorism when they came through the other side in the Red Sea. They, we've stopped shipping across the, the, the Suez Canal because those ships keep getting shot at by the Houthis. We keep going through, we, we don't go through the Red Sea now. We've been trying other ways around because of the terrorism. So now what we've done is crippled, literally crippled our capabilities to ship this was this is the largest this is absolutely the most critical port on the east coast and so you have to start asking how in the world does a ship come out of the dock make its turn propulsion on headed in the river and the captain starts screaming we have no control of this ship we absolutely it's running on its own we are not steering it we can't stop it we can't turn it we can't do nothing with it we if something don't happen we're we could hit this bridge and the whole time they're trying to figure out how to get back and hold uh, control the ship but the ship's navigation had been hacked had been jammed it had been taken over because it actually was turning and doing and maneuvering headed and then when it got close you can see it in the video it turns it turns literally and heads right for the pylon because that's the pylon that can take the whole bridge down. And so somebody starts shutting the power off and on and off and on. Guys, this is this to me. Now, uh, this to me, uh, somebody, and you say, Pastor, that's impossible. They can't hack ships. Really? Go ask President Donald Trump about it. Go ask the Secretary of the Navy about it. Because when President Trump was president uh, in 2017, I believe it was, two or maybe three of his Navy ships, three of our naval ships were hacked. We lost navigation system, and they crashed into cargo ships in the middle of the ocean. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but that, the odds of that are impossible. It happened to us. So here, but now Mayorkas has already uh, made a comment that this was not uh, an international incident. He didn't say this wasn't a terroristic. He didn't say this was not, this wasn't terrorism. He said this is not an international incident. Why even say that? Because everyone is absolutely realizing somebody took control of of the ship um, the vessel notified the captain notified the, the Maryland Department of Transportation said we've lost control and collision with this bridge is possible he was screaming ABC News quoted that the cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency reported quote the vessel struck the bridge causing a complete collapse according to marine traffic the ship departed the marine terminal in the port of Baltimore at 12.30 a.m. It sailed northwest past the nuclear ship Savannah. Then it turned, get this, it turned southeast to depart to the harbor. Releasing the tugboats, it still collided with the bridge at 1.38. This captain did not have control of this ship for one hour. This captain had no control, no one had control, this, the pilots they're called and when, they're, when they're bringing them out. The pilots had no control of the ship for one hour. They're screaming on the phone that we have lost all navigation. We can't, we can't, but the ship turned when it needed to. It went past the ships it was supposed to, and it headed straight toward the pylon of the Key Bridge of Baltimore. This is insane. How did it do that? Who was in control of it? It hit at the speed of 8.7 miles an hour. You might say, well, that's not very fast. This is a huge ship with a ton of power, a ton of weight. Yes, it doesn't need to go fast to take the bridge down. It just needs to hit the main pylon structure. Cameras from the Vessel Traffic Service captured the footage. I watched the footage myself, the collision. The ship's lights went in and out 
before the collision, indicating possible issue with the engine room. Despite the quick restoration of lighting, this suggests the full blackout occurred, prompting the emergency generator to resort to basic electrical services and lighting. Without propulsion, the tugboats had no power, had no steering, had no navigation, had no ability to stop, impossible to stop. The emergency generator does not connect to propulsion, but should support steering and navigation systems. But it didn't. It couldn't get it. It lost control because someone else apparently had control. That's Paul Begley's version of it. I'm just a pastor from the cornfields of Indiana. Who am I but nobody except what I saw and how in the world does a ship come out of a harbor, make that big turn, head this way, and go straight for the pylon uh, without navigation? Are you serious? How in the world, who controlled that ship for an hour? Now, you, you, you got to ask your, you know, I have to, you know, you could sit here and say, well, well let's blame ISIS. I don't think so. Uh, we could blame, you know, uh, uh, Russia. I don't think so. Uh, we could blame, maybe you should look at uh, China, take a real good peek at China. But do know this, that we've already had ships attacked in the Red Sea and the Mediterranean is why we haven't been going through the Suez Canal already because of the Houthis. And why haven't we taken the Houthis out of power? How come we haven't eliminated the Houthis along the coast of, of Yemen? Seriously, why didn't we do it? What, we've hit them, what, twice? A couple little slaps on the wrist, but we've allowed them to continue to shoot and sink two ships already off the coast of Oman, in the Red Sea, in the Mediterranean. you got to ask yourself, it's a, this is not only a hack. It's taken complete control. They hacked it for sure. To somebody, I think, somebody hacked it, took complete control of the ship. The captains are screaming. There's nothing they can do. The pilots can do nothing. And it's not just that they, it, it, but they, they, they controlled the ship. Somebody controlled the ship for an hour, folks, an hour. Could you imagine hearing the, the mayday and the, uh, the, Marine call and the 911 call or whatever else, all the screaming that this captain was probably, these pilots were probably doing. There's two pilots on these things. The captains in the ship, the two pilots are the tugboats pulling it. You know, they're the guys pulling it out there. And they're no doubt they're screaming. We don't have control of this thing. We still can't get control of this thing for an hour. Are you serious? <sighs> So, okay, we talk about this stuff in our book, Revela Revelation 9-11. I'm saying this to you. If you. Today is the day the book released. Matter of fact, this is the day the book released, March 26th, the day the bridge came down. We talk about Revelation 9-11, how the book of Revelation is intersecting with today's headlines. Half the earth is on fire, Okay. It took us two years to write the book. We did research right up to the last day. To, it went to the presses, adding stuff into the book because of things that were relevant. We talk about all of the things, including the chaos, the carnage, and the attacks upon humanity by the deep state, by the terrorist organizations, by a shadow government, by secret societies, by embedded terrorists, by all kinds of different ways and many different categories, cultural, I mean, you name it, we talk about it, okay? And so, and today the book just got released. This morning it is released, it is shipping. From what I heard, the books were already shipping out everywhere yesterday. They're shipping today. Some of you will even get your book today uh, in the mail. Some of you will get yours tomorrow. Some of you will probably get them Thursday. Some of you will get them Friday. They're shipping out like crazy out of Amazon.com. They're shipping out of Barnes and Noble. They're shipping out of Books a Million. They're shipping out of Goodreads. They're shipping out of Target. And they're shipping out of Walmart and then other independent bookstores wherever you may have purchased this online. This book may actually be in Barnes and Noble's store today. If you go in there, you may actually find it in Barnes and Noble or in Books a Million. Uh, or in Target or in Walmart or some other locations, okay? 
I, I don't know the exact day that the actual physical books were going to be sitting on the shelves, you know, but I know that they, they probably are there already, okay? So what I'm saying to you is get your copy now. Matter of fact, get five copies. You, one of them you want to keep. The other four you want to give away. Why do I want you to do this? Because God told me to write the book. Here's the thing about this. It's blowing my mind right now. I'm looking at this bridge behind me, and I'm thinking, on the day the book releases, the bridge comes down. And Lord knows what else is going to happen between now and that blood moon and this solar eclipse. And tonight, if, you're, if you have access to Newsmax TV, I'm on tonight. I'm being interviewed on the news hour with uh, Chris Salido. At, it's the, his show starts at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. There's a one-hour show. I'm on sometime during that hour. I don't know, and I don't know how long. But I'm on during that show. I'll be interviewed about, okay, the apoco- the uh, solar eclipse that's coming. What is the biblical sign of it? What could it mean? And, of course, I'm going to be talking about this bridge is what it could mean. We're going to talk about the book Revelation 9-11 as well. I may only be on for 10 minutes, you know, eight minutes. You never know in these segments. But I will be on tonight. My, co- my co-author, Troy Anderson, he was on yesterday, last night. He was on One um, America Network, okay? He and I both were on One America Network two weeks ago. He was on One America Network yesterday. I couldn't be because I had a doctor's appointment. But he was on. I'm on today. I'm on Newsmax and tomorrow, I'll be uh, we'll be on Christian Broadcasting Network. Uh, both myself and Troy Anderson will be on CBN. Okay, at around uh, I think around four. No, I don't know what time. I don't know what time. I don't know what time. But sometime tomorrow. Okay, on CBN. So uh, it's it's uh, it's interesting, you know. And yesterday on One America, they actually played that segment of, when, remember when I had Mark Biltz on and I interviewed Mark Biltz about the solar eclipse? Well, they, that, that, a little bit of that interview that I, uh, when I was interviewing Mark Biltz, that went on, Alex Jones put it on his, um, on his show, which has now had over 800,000 views. One America Network then took that little link and they stuck it on last night on the news on One America. So... People are starting to realize that these apocalyptic signs of the last days, they are, they are happening, folks, and they're bringing about. I want to lead people to Jesus Christ. This book, whole purpose is to lead people to Jesus Christ. And so anytime we get interviewed, anytime we get a chance, to, you know, one of the networks wants us on, uh, we're going to go on. We're going to talk about what's going on in the current world events and talk about how the book talks about all these things. But at the end of the day, we're trying to lead people to Jesus Christ, and that's what the book does. That's why it's important to get it in people's hands. You can stick a Bible in someone's hand. They'll probably put it on underneath the coffee table. They know what it means. They know what it means. And if they're not ready to read it, they'll just put it away. But if you put this book in their hands, they're interested on how much time they have left. They're interested in what, what's going on in the world. How does this relate to the Bible? And then as they get it toward the end of the book, well, the whole time I'm leading them, we're leading them to the cross. We're leading to the realization that you got to get right with God. Baltimore Bridge collapse. Baltimore Bridge collision collapse. Was the ship hacked? Was the navigation taken over? Did China do it? Who did it? What happened exactly? And uh, we hope to find out more. Uh, GPS navigation. We already saw it happen three times to our naval ships when Trump was president. And he was screaming, trying to figure out who was hacking his ships, although the media did not want to say that, the Pentagon did not want to say that, because if you can, if you say that the Pentagon, that three of our Navy ships over a period of a year were hacked, taken over, and crashed into other uh, cargo ships in the middle of the ocean, which is what happened three times. If you say that that would happen, then that means we don't have control of our Navy. And even now, 
I'm saying who hacked it. I guarantee you, the media is going to try to come up with every uh, every try to come up with every other possibility than that because that means who's in control, who's really in control. Give your life to Jesus Christ. What would Ernest Hemingway say? Didn't he write? He wrote the book, "The Old Man at the Sea." Oh, the Old Man in the Sea. I see geese flying high above the water. A child fishing with his father in the rain. I can smell blackberry brandy and chocolate covered candy. I see a soldier crying on a train, falling asleep. Reading Hemingway. No, I did and not. The light under the Tiffany lamp glows all night long. As I dream with weary wonder, leaving Earth before the dawn. I walked the lonely streets of Paris. I was lost and so afraid, falling asleep. Reading Hemingway. Feel the deepness of his weakness. I can taste the brandy sweetness at a roadside Idaho cafe. I can hear old Teddy laughing, Fitzgerald's toes are tapping to the roar and sounds of yesterday. Falling asleep. And the light under the Tiffany lamp glows all night long As I dream with weary wonder, leaving her before the dawn I walked the lonely streets of Paris I was lost and so afraid, falling asleep Walk the lonely streets of Paris. I was lost and so afraid, falling asleep, reading Hemingway. And a shotgun blast echoed across the page, falling asleep, reading Hemingway. Lord, amen. Give your life to Jesus Christ. We're living in the last days. We truly, truly are. I'll be back with more current world events and how they relate to biblical prophecy. Don't forget, tonight I am on Newsmax sometime be between 4 and 5 p.m. Eastern. I don't know what time I'm on, but I'll be live on Newsmax tonight with the, uh, of course, with the Chris uh, Salido uh, show and um, also I'll be on tomorrow with my co-author Troy Anderson on Christian Broadcasting Network CBN so that'll be tomorrow God bless all of you give your life to Jesus Christ the most important thing you can and uh, and and also if you get the book Revelation 9-11 get it read it 
Let it touch your heart. Let it move you. Let it help it. Let it sink in what God is doing, what's happening all around us so that people know. And if you want to order five of them, give four of them away. Uh, it could lead their soul to heaven. Seriously, that's the plan. God bless.